school. So that's the lunch menu news. Now let's get uh, Bill Munn back in here with moments in Grant County history. And good morning again, sir. Good morning. Uh, this morning I uh, want to talk about uh, an item that was uh, published in the Marion Chronicle Tribune on the editorial page on October 29th. Uh, in an editorial entitled Lessons of the Past, the writer addressed the significance of the Miami Native American people to the history of Miami County. And uh, in speaking of a particular episode of that history, it was characterized as shameful. And I would suggest to you that it has relevance to Grant County as well. What we're talking about is the removal of the Miami people in 1846, which was indeed a shameful part of federal policy outlined in President Andrew Jackson's message to Congress in 1830, titled On Indian Removal, which stated in part, what good man would prefer a country covered with forests and ranged by a few thousand savages to our extensive republic studded with cities, towns, and prosperous farms, occupied by more than 12 million happy people and filled with the blessings of liberty, civilization, and religion? Jackson continued by describing what he called the milder process by which the tribes which occupied the countries now constituting the eastern states were annihilated or have melted away to make room for the whites. We now propose to acquire the countries now occupied by the red men, to send them to a land where their existence may be prolonged and perhaps perpetual. This was to be the fate that would befall the Miamis inhabiting Miami and Grant counties of Indiana in October of 1846. Um, according to uh, historian Stuart Rayford, the Miamis remaining in Indiana were to suffer a precipitous decline due to the close proximity of the burgeoning white settlement of the region that brought economic exploitation, abundant alcohol, and the disruption of subsistence hunting and fishing of the tribe. Uh, the decline was from uh, several thousand in the 18th century to uh, 500 by 1846. Um, the plight of those Miamis remaining in the Grant County area will be complicated by Isaac Vandevanner, ostensibly acting as agent for the tribe, who was, in Rayford's words, milking the Miamis of their meager holdings. After continuing efforts of the local Native Americans to preserve some semblance of treaty rights, local recognition, and dignity, the son of Isaac Vandevander, newly appointed Assistant Attorney General Willis Vandevander, ruled that the Eastern Miamis were not Indians under the federal law of, in 1887. Uh, Rayford recounts that the combined forces of Indian agents Samuel McClure, Isaac Van Vanner, and businessman Robert Spencer of Marion would undo all efforts of the native people to gain tribal recognition of the federal government. As late as 1977, federal courts would use the rulings and action of the Van Vanners and others as a basis for the denial of tribal status. In concluding the editorial, the CT uses the specious argument that care should be used in judging those who lived in the past in that their experience and culture were different from ours. Care should be taken in weighing the evidence and assigning guilt. In the case of the Miami people, the evidence is clear that they were wronged in 1846, 1887, 1977, and that they continued to be wronged by a government whose case against them is based on Andrew Jackson ex Andrew Jackson's exterminationist policy and by the political conspiracy of Grant County politicians. By the standards of the time, what was perpetrated on the Miami people was a grave injustice. It still is. And that's the word of the day on Miami Miami people of Indiana yes. still still struggling for for tribal recognition and uh, still um, still not getting it yeah one of the many tragedies uh, when it comes to how we dealt with Indian nations yes. Miamis and many others yes and also by the way the local uh, just going a little further north the, the Potawatomis of course were in mm -hmm. the same uh, the same uh, boat as far as removal so it, it happened all over northern Indiana in 1846.
Thank you, Bill. Hey, and before you go, I don't know if you... <laughs> you don't have to tell me if you know if the Great Pumpkin exists. I thought I'd ask because you're such an authority. But you can probably tell me one of two things here. The scariest movie you've ever seen, if you want to think about that for a second, or an appropriate Halloween costume based on current events. I was thinking the scariest Halloween, well, well, not necessarily Halloween movie, but the scariest movie was, and then the, the, the title of the movie just escaped. It's the one, the Alfred Hitchcock movie. Psycho. Psycho, mm. the Bates Motel. There yeah. is go. That, wow. that I can recall. I was, you know, in high school then and a big fan of scary movies. And, uh, but that one, that one grabbed you. He had several of them. He had yes. the Burge, remember that Yes. Oh yeah! Oh, Someone said that was the uh, that was the 1960s version of Ang the Angry Birds. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, Psycho was mm, Psycho was pretty darn scary. Right up there, you're right, Bill. Thanks for coming in, sir. We'll see you next Monday, the day before Election Day, and do whatever reporting we need to do on the activities in uh, Bucktown. Aha! Thank you, sir. <laughs> I'm still we'll we'll still That's take something. calls if people want to fess yeah. up. Yeah, totally. or if you were a victim, you know, if you want sure. to get even with oh, a few yeah. people, just call in, right. let them have it. <laughs> Can't be the same people. They got to be in their seventies now, you know. Yes. Well, you know, there may be some Dragging people that, that are vigorous. Out. I don't know. Uh, asking for younger help, I don't know. <laughs> Chief, you guys managed to work through that pretty well. We do. You know, 20, 20 22 years ago, they they had a problem where. Uh, uh, they actually threw rocks at the trucks. They, they was at a point to where the firefighters tried to get out and put that outhouse out, and they was uh, throwing bricks and rocks. And no, yeah. you can't do that. Yeah, it went a little overboard there. Ugh. Good All thing right. for helmets, huh? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Bill. Old traditions die hard. That's mm. true. All right. Thank you, Bill. Moments in Grant County history with Grant County historian Bill Munn, along with Marion Fire Chief Steve Gorell. I'm Tim George. More Halloween safety tips, and if you have comments on Halloween, we're wanting to know what you think would be a very appropriate current events type costume. Think about that, or just share with us your scariest movie ever, or both, 662-1400, as we wish you a happy Halloween.